this car looks pretty amazing. I mean, if you want to drive a very long way and not charge, this is going to be a really good choice. 1,400 kilometers of range, 430 kilometers of EV only range, 500 kilowatt fast charging. I mean, if you just don't want an EV, if you need something with more than 600, 700 miles of range, then this is it. And this thing, I'm, I'm just shocked by how good this is actually going to be. Guys, I just spoke to an executive, in fact, the executive in charge of Xpeng's drivetrains, meaning basically everything that goes into their cars that really matters. And he revealed to me some information about Xpeng's new hybrids, e-revs. He revealed why they are not using plug-in hybrids. They are using e-revs, so a small range extender motor. But I didn't realize that these were coming so soon. Here is the new Xpeng G6. This is the updated version. It has 500 kilowatt fast charging, and it's a, a hybrid. I believe this is the fastest charging hybrid in the world. Technically, actually, it's an Xpeng G6, and they just add a small range extender motor. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. Would I personally buy this car? I own an Xpeng G6. No, absolutely not. I'd much prefer the EV only version, but I'm sure that a lot of people would like to buy one of these. If you look in China, EVREV sales have been growing pretty damn fast this year. I think they've grown at around 60%, faster than any other drivetrain. Now, that said, there's still a small percentage of the market, but they are definitely really, really um, catching on. So Xpeng say that their new hybrids, I think there's six new models, it looks as though they are going to make a hybrid version of the G9, the G7, uh, maybe the P7 Plus, and also the G6, and I'm not sure which other models. But here's a photo. Uh, this is actually from electricvehicles.com. This shows you the new G6 coming with their range extender. It's refueling. So this was spotted in China, and this was shared on Weibo, Chinese social media site, it's going to have 1,400 kilometers of range. It uses uh, actually a pretty big battery, so it'll have quite a bit of range. The uh, Jackie Gu from Xpeng has told me that range is going to be 1,400 kilometers, uh, 500 kilowatt charging, so the same charging speed as the existing car, same batteries, but the battery will be, I believe, a little bit smaller battery pack. However, interestingly, it's still going to have more than 300 kilometers of EV only range. So I personally have been saying to people, and I've gotten a lot of criticism from this. I've gotten people really hating me, saying they're unsubscribing. I've been saying, hold off on getting a plug-in hybrid, a FEV, F a PHEV, because I think this e-rev technology is better. And one of the key reasons is what I just mentioned. Would you prefer a vehicle, right, that has 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers of EV only range or 300 kilometers for basically for the same price. For me, it's an absolute no brainer. I think if you've got an e rev, really the idea is you're only going to use the petrol engine or the gas engine very rarely. So, say for example, when you're doing a long road trip, other than that, you never want to use it, right? I think I personally think an e rev is a better solution. And in fact, this. Uh, Jackie from Xpeng has told me that in charge of powertrains at Xpeng, he said that he, he agrees. The reason companies he believes are making plug-in hybrids, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, is because they're coming from having an internal combustion car and they're converting it into a hybrid. And that actually makes a lot of sense if you look at the Ford Ranger, the Ford Ranger plug-in hybrid, they've basically just taken a Ford Ranger and stuck a battery under the tray. It's a bit more complicated than that, but that's essentially what they've done. So I think that's a good point. The plug-in hybrid is usually, not always, but usually a modified internal combustion car, whereas the e-rev is a modified EV, and which is one of the reasons why I think the e-rev is a better idea. They're usually more efficient, use a, use a fair bit less fuel than a plug-in hybrid when they are actually using their small generator engine to recharge the battery. So yeah, you've got to get a lot of range, 1,400 kilometers of range. Now, apparently, according to Xpeng, it's also gonna have 430 kilometers of range, but I said 300 because that's real world range. You're gonna get that in the real world. But the CLTC range 
on the battery power alone is 430 kilometers. I suspect that is actually the standard range G6. So I suspect they've actually kept the battery pack the same. It's a, a about a 65, I think it's a 66 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery. So they've just simply added a small 1.5 liter engine. Yeah, naturally aspirated small engine. It'll run, when it's running, it'll just basically run at the same RPM. I think they tune them to around 2000 RPM and they just run at the same level. So you don't get this peak where it goes up to, you know, 6000 RPM or 4000. You don't get that. It just runs at the same steady pace and slowly recharges the battery if you need it to. Now, of course, if you've got 430 kilometers of EV only range, it's very unlikely you're going to need to. Here's the other thing. If you get the new model of the G6 and it has 600 kilometers of EV only range, do you even need, do you need an e-rev? Well, I don't think you do, but you know, some people obviously disagree with that. That's fair enough. So what else do we know? Well, it has the existing 800 volt platform. It has basically all the features that the G6 has today, the Turing chip, uh, which enables self-driving. And before I, before I get on to some other things, first, I should mention that it uses the Kunpeng Super Electric System, which was announced actually last year by Xpeng. Now, while I've researched for this video, I found some more information. Xpeng do officially say all of their EVs, all their plug-in hybrids, not plug-in hybrids, e-revs, uh, they will use the existing 800 volt platforms. They'll continue to use lithium ion phosphate batteries from CALB, but they do have some other battery supplies. That's their primary battery supplier, CALB. And there is going to be five models of hybrids, e-revs, all of them. The other model we do know is confirmed is the G9, but there's also an X9. So the X9, which is their MPV, that will have a plug-in hybrid model as well. And I think that's actually coming apparently towards the end of this year. Now, Xpeng are spending a lot of money on R&D. They spend a lot, money, more, lot more money on R&D than a lot of other companies in terms of percentage in comparison to the cars they sell. So they're investing pretty heavily into a lot of new models of car. And as a result, they're hiring a lot of staff. I believe they've just moved office because their current office in uh, Guangzhou in China is too small. So they've moved office to a different office. They've hired apparently uh, 8,000 more people and their total workforce is now 30,000 people. They're aiming to reach 60 markets around the world this year where they'll be selling their cars. Massive expansion. The company is really doing very well this year. Their, their sales have grown by more than 200%. And I suspect with these e-rev versions, for example, the X9, it is coming to Australia and in many other markets around the world. But for a lot of people, if they want to, a van or an SUV and they want to do towing, they kind of don't have many options. There's not many options on the market. But if you were to get one of these with this e-rev little extender, extended range motor, 99% of the time you drive the car, you are got to be doing your local trips. Then if you're a grey nomad, you're doing towing on the weekends, then you'll use that e-rev range extender and it'll be perfect. You're going to be getting more than a thousand kilometers of real world range and essentially you've got to have the most efficient option and it's going to really suit your needs, I think, really well. So I'm not a huge fan of hybrids, but I think for certain use cases, some people actually need them. And then they do make sense. Now they do. In 10 years, it will be different. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.